to order at 3.59 because we are early this year. Thank you. Um, we'll be moving into roll call. Senator Biggs? Sad. Senator Calder on Pitchford? Yay. Senator McDavid? Here. Senator Schmidt? Here. Senator Johnson? Here. Senator Dickey? Hello. Senator Watts? Here. Senator Soliman? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Senator Brandmeyer? She's here, right? Yeah. Senator Cherry? Here. Senator Moore? Here. Um, Senator Prada? Um, Senator Schumacher? Here. Senator Pearson? Here. Senator Motari? Um, Rossi. Oh, yes. Um, Senator Chiwatha? Here. Senator Stiff? Here. Senator Weinzerl? Here. Senator Bana? Present. Senator Vishal? Here. Senator Cote? Proxy. Senator Nellis? Here. Senator Karkey? Senator Karkey? <laughs> Senator Swanka? Here. Senator Vandra? Here. Senator Vodka? Present. Senator Spursel? Here. Um, Senator Walford? Here. Uh, President Omar? Present. Vice President Trey? Present. And I'm here too. Uh, we will now be moving into a presentation from our wonderful advisor, John, about the budget. Sweet, just kind of an easy way to break up study time um, and whatever else you might be doing. 
Um, but yes, so March 5th, Feb 27th from 4 to 5.30 at Nicolette Bike. Thanks so much. Thank you. Is there anyone else here for open forum? Open forum? No? Todd, are you? I mean, not Todd. I kept looking at you, Todd, but I'm not calling at you. <laughs> um, John, are you ready to present? Do you still need a minute? Okay. So we are going to do the approval of the consent agenda while we're so waiting. Is there any dissent to the approval of the consent agenda? Any dissent? Any dissent? The consent agenda is approved. Um, with that, we'll just start officer reports too. President Omar? Um, I just have a few points that I'd like to touch on. We did on Monday go up to the city, up to the Capitol. Um, I met with some representatives. It was such a successful, wonderful day. Um, I would like to thank the senators and um, the member of the newspaper board for coming. Matt, thank you so much. Max, Max sorry. Um, we do have um, advocacy day coming up. We, we, we will be leaving Saturday at 9 a.m. For those of you who did sign up, room schedules have been printed um, as well as Senator Maltar has passed out information on where to meet and who's going to be going in whose car. Check your junk mail. And yeah, you may want to check your junk mail because some of the mail that she's been sending has been going to junk for those of you who are attending advocacy conference. Um, Lastly, I just wanted to recognize the Senator of the Month um, for February. I would like to give this award to a senator who joined us on a vacancy um, and has done so well in her spot, especially dealing with the parking and transportation issues and taking on a new role as Student Affairs Coordinator. So we thank you for the work that you have done. And we want to recognize you. And with that, I yield for any questions. Are there any questions for President Omar? Any questions? Seeing none, we will move back to John. Super sweet. Okay, now that I've got technology that's up and working, um, there's this packet of documents coming across, uh, coming around for you um, right now. So, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to have um, several presentations for budget requests um, and all of that good stuff. So, next week, who do we have, Madam Speaker? For uh, next week, we have campus rec fee, intercollegiate athletics, and student, student health services. Okay. Yeah. So, um, what happens is there are several fees that students pay here at the university. Okay. In addition to your tuition. Okay. The mandatory fees that all students pay are your student activity fee, your student health fee, your technology fee your intercollegiate athletics fee, your student, uh, student union fee, did I mention that one already? No, okay. And then you also pay a fee that students approved several years ago to support um, outdoor campus recreation facilities. Okay, so those fees are, the people who oversee those fees or the directors who are work with those fees are gonna be presenting their requests to you over the next several weeks. Okay, and starting next week, as, as mentioned, you're going to have um, athletics, you're going to have the campus rec outdoor facility fee, you're going to have the student health fee requests presented to you. How the process works, I'm going to go through several, I'm going to go through these different fees uh, with you here, and kind of how the process works for the request and the recommendations that ultimately land on President Davenport's desk for final approval. Okay. Um, this process takes a long time. These budget directors have been working with these uh, budgets for, for several months already. Um, for most of us uh, who are student activity fee funded, um, our budgets were due January 15th. Okay? So most of us had to have our, our requests submitted to Teresa Schwartz, the business manager of the CSU, by January 15th. Um, and SAC, the Student Allocations Committee, has been hearing the in-person requests for those budgets um, over the past several weeks. So again, we're gonna talk about those fees, kind of what the process is. Um, I'm gonna tell you now that my biggest message to you as student senators, these are big decisions that you're gonna be making in terms of recommendations and requests. My biggest recommendation to you, and I think your biggest duty, is to go into the process, especially when it comes to voting, well-informed, okay? 
So whatever that means for you, in terms of being well informed, do it. Okay. If you think you can be well informed enough by listening to the presentations that are delivered for you in the coming weeks, great. If you are somebody who you know that you're going to want to be a little bit more um, go through budgets with a little bit more fine tooth comb, and that means that you need to actually like sit down and look at the documents that are in the notebooks that are going to be available to you in the student government office, then do it. Okay. Your duty is to go in and make a well-informed decision, and you need to make sure that you're well-informed. Okay. So I'm going to go through some of these. Feel free to stop me along the way if you've got any questions. Um, but I'm going to try to uh, give you a, the basics without being too. I'm not going to go too far off into the weeds. Okay. Um, so kind of the process. Student fee-funded departments and the functional areas they begin to develop their. Um, their budgets for the next fiscal year. Are we run on a fiscal year. Our fiscal year starts July 1st and it ends on uh, June 30th every year. Okay, so money that we are spending and the budget that we've been using for right, right now, that money we started using July 1st. Okay, and we can use it through June 30th of next year. Student activity fee funded departments will present their budget request to the Student Allocations Committee or SAC over the course of a several week period. Okay, um, they have uh, how many more weeks left of presentations? This, this Friday. This Friday is the last one. So there have been five weeks of presentations, all of our student activity fee funded areas. Um, the front page on the packet that went around to you, those are your student activity fee funded areas. Okay, so campus recreation sports. Um, forensics, gender and sexuality programs, the green transportation fee, aka your buses, um, international center uh, student activities, repertory, dance, music, ensemble, theater, all that kind of stuff. Um, those are a lot of the student activity fee funded areas. All of these areas have been what's presenting to SAC over the past five weeks. Okay. Um, the other student fee funded areas, campus rec, student health, tech, and the CSU come directly to student government to present their requests. Okay, the student allocations committee does not hear the requests from those fee fund those those uh, those other fees. Okay, they come directly to student government. Um, after the student activity fee funded areas make their requests to SAC, SAC spends a whole day deliberating those requests, and they come up with this document. This document that's in front of you is the current allocation for student activity fees for this year. Okay. What SAC comes up with during their deliberation is everything except that last column where it says uh, student government recommend. Okay. SAC comes up and will present to you everything to the left of that column. Okay. They're going to present to you their recommendation for those student fee funded areas. Okay. And that's going to happen on Wednesday, March 4th. Okay, the Wednesday before spring break is when you're going to hear from the Student Allocations Committee uh, chairperson on the student activity fee recommendations. Okay, student government then on March 25th is going to um, deliberate the recommendations that SAC has given you and make that recommendation that goes in that last column. Okay? When you talk to veterans who've been on student government before, they'll talk about that as being the long meeting. Okay? That meeting has, we're going to start it at 3 o'clock and it's been known to go very, very late. The past couple of years it hasn't been too bad. We've been 9-ish, 10 o'clock at night. Um, um, but we've, no, we've been known in the past to go tell starting near midnight to get this thing done. Okay. Yes. Yes. It is a great bad meeting. Um, but it's a it's a high stakes meeting. Y'all are dealing with a lot of money. Okay. So student government will deliberate and make the recommendations to the student activity fee budget, and then this gets sent to President Davenport for approval. Okay. Um, if the student activity fee recommended increase is more than 2.0%, it has to go to a vote of the student body for approval. Okay? 
you can see in about the middle of this page where it shows what the student activity fee increase was from last year to this year was 4.9%. That had to go to the student body for a vote last April, and it passed. Okay, We've had to go to a referendum each of the past two years. It's a state law. And um, your fellow students have trusted you and overwhelmingly supported your recommendations. Okay. So that's something to know that if you come up with more than 2% increase um, for this budget and the athletics budget, uh, it has to go to a vote. Um, from there, the recommendation <coughs> is Dr. Jones and Davenport for approval. So that's kind of a, a, a quick down and dirty. We're going to talk about each of the fees here, though. Okay? So student activity fee, of course, uh, this one, this is the big one that you spend most of your time on. It's going to provide partial or complete funding for some areas on campus. Um, I mentioned the reporter, campus rec, student activities. Uh, my office is totally student fee funded, uh, student activity fee funded. Uh, Multicultural Affairs, Carney International Center gets some. Um, this budget is recommended by the Student Allocations Committee, reviewed by this body, and then it goes to uh, uh, the, the Dr. Jones and Dr. Davenport. It is subject to the vote of the student body, like I said. Um, it is assessed on a per credit hour basis, but we have what's called banded tuition here. Can somebody explain to me what banded tuition means? Yes. Uh, it stays at a certain amount for, um, I can't remember how long the time period is, but it's like, it stays at that amount. Correct. 12 to 18 credit hours is the same for tuition, and your student fees are the same way. Okay? So your student activity fee gets banded at a, at a, uh, that, a certain amount. So. You can see in that middle section, that middle rectangle, your student activity fee for this year is $8.77 per credit, but it's banded at $105.24. So $8.77 times 12 is $105.24. That's how much most students are paying in student activity fee this semester. Okay? So, um, by men's state policy, the most that this can be is $112.50 per semester. Okay? That is according to board policy. Um, and so we, we won't exceed that amount. Okay? Any questions about the student activity fee? The other thing that you're going to see in this packet that I gave you, um, SAC, the Student Allocations Committee, comes up with what's called a narrative. Okay? They know that if they just throw numbers at you, you're going to have some questions, okay? So SAC, they prepare what's called the narrative, and it gives the breakdown of the re their request and their recommendation for all of the student activity fee funded areas, okay? It's very helpful. It's meant to be, like, basic, but it's meant to give a brief explanation that will satisfy most people around this table in terms of why, why, why the recommendation is being made, okay? So when SAC presents on March 4th, again, you're going to get this chart, and then you're going to get the narrative that will show you their rationale. Okay? Any questions about the student activity? Can yes, I add one thing on that? Just in the past, some of you sitting around the table maybe have been here before. There used to be a narrative, and the PowerPoint were a little different. Uh, we've made a decision this year that both the PowerPoint and the narrative will be the same document. Well, all the information will be there for you, but it was a little confusing in the past, so we decided in working with the, uh, the leadership of the uh, Student Allocations Committee that we're going to have one document, so it won't confuse your about the In this packet, the last sheet that is there gives the breakdown of all of the different fees that you're paying the student government deals with, okay? So it's showing you how much your fees are for the student activity fee, the student union fee, the tech fee, health, campus rec, outdoor facility fee, the sports dome, which you just uh, passed a year ago, um, and then the athletics fee. So the next fee I'm talking about is the intercollegiate athletics fee here. It partially funds your intercollegiate athletics department. Why do I say partially funds? They have a lot of other sources of money. Okay? <coughs> what might be some other sources of money that intercollegiate athletics gets? Yeah. Ticket revenue. Ticket revenue. What else? Yep. Sponsorship. Sponsorship money. Okay. What else? Donors. Donors. Okay. So, intercollegiate athletics, they have several different revenue sources that support their operations. 
the, student, the intercollegiate athletics fee is part of is part of that. Um, they will present to you. It's developed by um, predominantly, um, primarily Kevin Beisman, your director of athletics, and Tim Marshall, who is your associate director of athletics. Okay, so those two gentlemen are the ones who will most likely be here to present the athletics fee budget. They will probably bring in some student representation as well uh, to speak on behalf of the student athletes um, for that budget. Um, student government has the ability to review that. Okay, They have the ability to take a look at it and say, yep, we agree with your request and we recommend funding the request. Student government can modify it either way, up or down, Okay, and make that recommendation as well. Whatever you recommend as a group, okay, if it's two percent, if it's an increase of two percent or less, it goes to President Davenport for approval. If it is an increase of more than two percent, this is the other fee that is subject to a vote by the student body. Okay? So if intercollegiate athletics comes in and says we need a four percent increase and you agree, you're then saying we're going to send this to the vote of the student body for approval, okay? okay. Um, what is recommended for this group is that you have something in your back pocket. If something goes to a vote of the student body and it fails, what's your backup plan? And that's where student government will want to say, okay, we're going to back it bound down to 2.0% so that that stays within state law, okay? And it would be the same with the student activity fee as well. What's that backup plan if there's, if, if your primary proposal is gonna be more than 2% increase, what's your backup plan to get it to 2%, okay? Um, once it either goes to a vote of the student body, or if it doesn't need to, it gets recommended by this body, it goes to Dr. Jones for review, and he forwards on his recommendation to President Davenport, okay? And President Davenport has not, he, he has faith in this body's recommendation and has not often um, countered what this, what this body recommends. Okay. Um, again, this one is also assessed on a per credit hour basis. You can see for this year the intercollegiate athletics fee is $3.93 a credit hour. Banded at $47.16. The max it can go to by system policy is $55 a credit hour, or $55 per semester. Okay. Any questions about the intercollegiate athletics fee? Okay. Cool. The next one is the student health services fee. Again, this partially funds student health services operations. What, what, what might be the other sources of revenue for student health services? Insurance charges. Okay. Office visits. Okay. Pharmacy. Okay other things like that. They might also get some grants for certain programming, okay, things like that. Um, this one, like the athletics fee, is reviewed, revised, and recommended by student government. The person who's likely to present this is the Director of Student Health Services, Wendy Shu, and there is also a Student Health Service advisor, um, Fee Advisory Committee that will likely have student representation presenting that, that fee request, okay. They'll show you what their expenses are. They'll say, here's what the expense boils down to, and they will make the request. Um, it is assessed on a per credit hour basis, also banded, capped at $75 a semester. Um, this one is not subject to a vote of the student body, okay? okay? So this year you are paying $542 per semester. There was not an increase this year from last year and you're paying, paid $65.04 at the bank. Any questions about Student Health Services Advisory Committee, or a fee? The student Union fee um, partially funds the operations and programs of the Centennial Student Union. Um, the Student Union Board reviews the budget, um, and it will be presented by um, a, the Student Union Board Chair, usually. Uh, in conjunction with Mr. Mark Constantine, um, and so he will have some input on that as well. This body, again, reviews the re request. Um, it can possibly revise it, okay, the recommendation. Um, and this one is not subject to a vote of the student body again. Um, and it is also assessed on a per credit hour basis. There is no cap on this fee, 
Okay, unlike the other one, there's not a cap on the student union fee. Um, and as you can see in the chart here, this year's student union fee is $10.78. Um, there was actually an 11 cent decrease per credit hour this year from last year's fee. Um, and so you're paying 10.78 a credit hour, uh, 129.36 per semester for banded. Okay. Any questions about the CSU fee? What's the date for this one? 18. March 18. Thank you, guys. Okay. So, yep, there we go. So you come, you have basically what it's going to look like is you have the uh, next week. You're going to have uh, the three that we talked about: outdoor rec, um, student health, student and health, and intercollegiate. intercollegiate athletics. Okay. The following week is. Um, I don't have the chart in front of me. I'll I don't know if there are presentations. Zach presentation. The fourth, yes, March 4th, the week before spring break. Okay, thank you. The week after that is spring break. The week after that is when you have your other fees, your CSU fee, your tech fee, will be presented on the 18th, and then the 25th is your big budget hearing. Okay? The tech fee partially funds the operations and services provided by IT Solutions. Um, it will be, the, the people presenting it will likely be Brian Schneider and Mark Johnson. Brian's over there sitting against the wall as well. So you'll see his face um, uh, on the 18th as well to talk about the student uh, technology uh, fee. So again, they'll make a request. You have the ability to say, yep, looks good. We recommend that, that, uh, that fee. Uh, or you can revise it upwards or downwards. Um, your recommendation goes to Dr. Jones for uh, review and he recommends to President Davenport for approval. This is assessed on a per credit hour basis also. Um, it is capped at $12 a credit um, and would be banded at $144 a credit hour. So you can currently see that you are paying um, $10.50 per credit hour. So they are under the cap, um, and we have not yet seen what they will request, but they could request, and you could recommend up to $12 a credit hour for the technology. Okay, and this one does not go to a vote of student body either. Questions about the tech? The Campus Rec Outdoor Facility Fee, Tom will go into a little bit more detail about this, but this is one of those that was recommended and voted on by students several years ago. Um, your review of this fee is kind of a formality, okay? There's an agreement and that, um, that fund, that fee is banked on being there. Um, they've moved forward with it, assuming that it's going to be there every year. Um, so uh, through fiscal year 28 is when this fee was, uh, it was set to, the original approval of this fee is set to kind of sunset. So we've got a few more years on it. Um, and so it's two fifty a credit hour, banded at twelve for a max of thirty dollars a semester. Okay, and so this one really, there's not much to it. Todd will review um, and answer questions about what it's used for, that kind of stuff. Um, but it's kind of a, a formality, a one that was agreed to, much like the dome fee uh, that was approved a couple of years ago. Okay. Any questions about that one? Okay, the seasonal sports and recreation facility fee, again, partially funds the construction of the bubble. Um, it's assessed at 83 cents a credit hour and capped at $10 a semester. Um, next academic year will be the second year of the uh, tenure initial agreement. So again, um, that one will go forward as, um, as voted on and approved by the students as well. So any questions about the dome fee? Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the state law, this is relatively new still. We're still um, <coughs> figuring it out. This will be the third year where if the student activity fee or the, um, rec or the intercollegiate athletics fee, uh, the increase is recommended at more than 2% by you. Um, it goes to a vote of student body. Um, the vote will take place the same day as part of the student government election. We've planned everything so that all of the budgets get presented and your recommendations are made in time for that election day. Um, it also requires any referendum like that requires an open forum for students to hear about it and to express their ideas, thoughts, and concerns. We have planned that to be done in conjunction with the president and vice presidential forum uh, that takes place before the election as well. So there will be the candidate forum, 
with presidential candidates, the candidate forum with vice presidential candidates, and then if you recommend an increase of more than 2% to either the athletics fee or the student activity fee, there will be an open forum tell on that. All right there, same space, within the same time frame. Okay? So any questions about the state law? Um, the budget hearing itself. So what will happen with the budget hearing? When you do your, um, when SAC presents to you on March 4th, okay, um, you will have the ability to um, ask questions, all of that kind of stuff. When we come back on, um, they, they'll set a deadline for you. Usually it's within a couple of days of that, that hearing. If there is a department that is fee funded that you would like to ask questions of, okay, um, you will have the ability to let Amber know so that those departments can be um, uh, asked to be present at your, your budget hearing. Why is that? Um, the departments that come to that budget hearing are the ones that are typically either not satisfied with the recommendation that the Student Allocations Committee has made to you. So say they came in and they asked for $50,000 and SAC said, we're going to recommend $40,000, but the department's not happy with that. They're going to file notice of their intent to appeal the recommendation, and they will come to you and make their case for that funding. Okay? So they're going to show up. If a department asks for $50,000 and SAC says, yep, we're good with $50,000, we recommend $50,000, that department may assume or believe that unless you ask them to be there, they don't have anything to worry about. Okay? They may think we're going to be we're going to be okay. They may not think to show up. Okay? That's where when you see the SAC recommendation and if you have questions for a department about their funding or anything like that, we're going to want to let Amber know so that they can be invited and requested to come to the budget hearing where you will have the ability to ask them questions. Okay? So, Departments not satisfied with SAC's recommendation have the chance to appeal that recommendation to you. They get to make the case for why their funding should be increased. They'll briefly present at the beginning of that meeting um, for your uh, deliberation. Like I said, generally speaking, if departments are satisfied with the SAC recommendation, they're not going to come unless you ask them to be there. Okay? So um, you can request that the departments want to be there. Um, typically, in the past, student government has not made adjustments to the recommendation without providing notice to the department that is being considered. That's just a kind of com a common courtesy, okay? Um, during that budget hearing, they'll go down the line. Um, usually the speaker will, um, she has the ability to do it how she wants to, but what typically has happened is if there's an appealing department, um, they will go through those appeal appealing department recommendations first so that they don't have to sit there for the entire of a long meeting turns out. Okay? So they try to go through those first. So when I can't remember if I had questions over this because yeah, keep in mind. So um, the departments, they're not nobody makes money on these fees. They're all spending the money on behalf of students and student needs and student programs and things like that. Okay? Um, we want to encourage you to be well informed, which means, yes, if you really have some questions where you need to do digging um, in front of the entire body, ask the department to be there. But one of the things, if you want to ask, say, for example, you want to look at my budget and say, what do you do? What does fraternity and sort of life do with their money? Okay? That's the type of question that you can ask outside of the budget hearing. And you should ask outside of the budget hearing. Okay? Lord knows um, you could do that with every single department. But these departments have already put time into their request, they present it to SAC, and SAC has spent oftentimes eight to nine hours deliberating these budgets already. Okay, so um, if you want to know what they do with their money, there's going to be a copy of all of the requests made available to you for review in the student government office. Okay, we encourage you if you have specific questions that you don't understand about somebody's budget, you're going to be able to reach out to those departments and ask those questions. Okay. Um, as mentioned, SAC has spent more than 15 hours hearing the presentations and reviewing uh, their recommendations. Um, 
you can you approve their appointments to the student allocations committee. Um, I would encourage you to trust some of the hard work that they've done. Um, they're doing the dirty work for you. They're doing it so that you don't have to spend 10 hours in a budget meeting if you don't want to. Okay. Um, and another thing, when you're thinking about perspective, when you're talking about debating things on the floor about the budget recommendations, one penny in student activity fees is roughly three thousand dollars total. Okay. Why do I tell you that? If you're looking at somebody's recommendation or somebody's uh, uh, their allocation through the student activity fee process, and you're talking about five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars here, okay. If you re reduce somebody's allocation by five hundred dollars, you're not going to make a difference in the overall student activity. Okay. If you're looking to make a difference in the actual student activity fee, keep in mind to make $3,000, to make a one penny difference, you're talking $3,000 in changes that need to happen. Okay? So keep it in perspective when you're talking. There have been some students before where they've looked at it and they've, they've been fighting over 75 bucks. Okay? 75 bucks ain't going to make a difference when you're talking about your overall student fee. So keep the big picture in mind. Okay? One penny is $3,000 roughly in that overall budget. Okay? So keep that in mind. Again, be well informed, ask good questions. Feel free to ask around any of the people who are around this room who deal with fee-funded areas. They're gonna be happy to answer questions that you might have, okay? Um, uh, do a little reading in those uh, budget requests if you need to. If you wanna have somebody come and present to the entire student during the student set during your budget hearing, Great, do it, um, have a list of questions. Um, sometimes people won't know why they're being asked here. If you are gonna ask for a department to come, you might even send them and say, here are the questions I've got for you. Okay, so that they know what they're coming into. So, um, this is probably the biggest, most important thing you do all year, is, is reviewing budgets. Lord knows money is a very sensitive thing for a lot of students, um, and you're entrusted with a lot of, a lot of it. Um, in terms of the recommendations that you get to make. So uh, I take this job seriously, and then um, again, make sure you're well informed, uh, think about your fellow students, uh, and, and ask good questions. So I think that's all I've got. That's, any questions about any of those fees or what's gonna, what it's gonna look like over the next few weeks? Yeah. Are there any questions for either John, myself, about the rest of our important work? <laughs> Basically, anything? Yep, Senator Bay. Okay, um, remind me again, we cannot have proxies for the big meeting, right? Correct. So, um, when we get closer to the meeting, we will have a, um, so that meeting will start at three. Um, we will have a letter um, that you can give to your professors explaining why you aren't able to, it's still on a Wednesday, and most of you guys are in committee anyways, but like let's say you have a class that goes till 3.30, you need to be at the meeting starting at three. So we will have a letter to give to your professors that says they need to be at this meeting because you cannot have a proxy. Um, if you do end up, we'll, we'll call recesses at certain points, and we can kind of talk about that as we get closer to the meeting about how often we want to have like a 10 minute break so then we can all go to the bathroom because we don't want people getting up and moving around and leaving while we're discussing the budget because that is not only like not efficient or effective, you're also not there for part of the discussion about what students are going to pay. So you guys are all required to be there, you, barring any like crazy circumstances of course, but like class is not a reason that you can show up later and miss the budget meeting, if that makes sense, or work. You can't make sure your requests work off now so, because that's... This is arguably the most important part of your position. So we have to be there for it. The memo that we provide will have all of your names listed individually on it. I'll share it with you via OneDrive, and then you can either download it, email it to your professors, or print it out as you need. Um, are there any other questions? Any other questions? Um, I recommend that you all start looking at budget stuff now, and especially as we have budget presentations coming up, you're asking questions here, you guys are asking questions outside of Senate, so then we aren't in the budget meeting till midnight. Um, with that, any final questions? Uh, Sarah Baca? Sure. Yeah. 
So we have that book that John was talking about in the office. Yep. Anything else? Seeing none, thank you, John. So, President Omar, do you have anything to add or no? Okay, Vice okay. President Trenny. <clears throat> thank you, everyone. Um, thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, so we'll be tabling next week on Thursday from 10 to 10 to 1. I thought it was 2. 10 to 2. <laughs> so sign up. Um, and if you're going to table, please show up. If you don't, I will send you to Ethics and Standards. If not, she will send you to Ethics and Standards. It's kind of rude to sign up and then not show up. Um, so please let us know or Andrew in advance if you're not going to attend. We will have things to table about, so please come. Um, sorry, I'm sick. That's why my voice is so... Um, we had our lobby trip, as President Omar said on Monday. It went extremely well. Um, we talked to a lot of legislators, over 20 different. And so we have extra candy to hand out, and we'll hand it this way. Take one. It's extra. Um, and with that, we have Pedal Pass Poverty on Saturday. If you're not going to Students United Advocacy Conference, and you want to pedal for homelessness, please talk to me, or we'll have a sign-up sheet go around. Um, what, John, do you know what time it is? Pedal Pass Poverty. First one's at 9. First one's at 9. I can, I can get you the details. Um, it's a great way. You're only pedaling for like 20 minutes, and it goes a long way. It's for a good cause. So just let us know. We'll get you the right place, time, and location. Um, with that, I yield. Are there any questions for Vice President Trenny? Any questions? Oh, sorry. Amber did tell me she wanted everyone to know. She sent out an email today about food restrictions. Please respond now if you have food restrictions for the bank land budget meeting. Hopefully you got that. Yes. yes. Okay. Please respond. That was just a reminder. She wanted me to tell her. Yes. Any questions? Questions? Seeing now we'll move into my officer report. Um, our Dean of the Day is the Arts and Humanity Dean, Dean Brown. <laughs> Um, with that, we um, office hours are also due, well, today slash tomorrow, so make sure you submit them tomorrow by noon. I've gone on and made sure that everyone is accepted into the Engage page. If you have not joined, it's the 87th Student Government Office Hours Engage page. Just send a request and I'll accept it. Um, with that, with office hours, just a reminder that you need to do six every two weeks. They, um, one needs to be on the sheet, and if you haven't put down your one consistent hour, um, see us in the office so then we can get that updated. And um, also, if you do not submit to office hours throughout the course of the semester, you will be sent to Ethics and Standards. That's what it was last semester, that's what it's gonna be this semester. So make sure that we're getting those done on time. Um, other than that, I don't believe I have anything. Are there any questions for me? Or am I forgetting anything? No? Awesome. So with that, we'll move into Senator Report. Senators first of all. Hi, everybody. I'm back. Um, you saw a lot of me last week, but I do have a couple updates for you. On to about hunger since we last spoke. Um, so Thursday, I actually actually had the chance to meet with Cindy Janey and discuss um, the possibility of implementing it here and what that would look like. We had a really good meeting, and she was very hopeful and optimistic. So now she's going to get in touch with Sodexo and our dining services and see what the possible layouts would look like and come back with some options. So I'm hoping to hear back from her after spring break sometime, and then we can keep pushing and see what this would look like. Um, and then also just today, I had the opportunity to call with Cole Dennison, who was the student lead on that food and security report that I talked to you about. So he's now doing some really amazing work at the University of Iowa. So he's like on the forefront of food and security on college campus, college campuses. So he was super insightful. And there's actually a new report that's coming out in about a month that will actually finally give us some numbers on retention and how that relates to food insecurity and how um, swipe out hunger, meal plan donation programs in general um, affect retention and affect student life. And so that's really exciting because we haven't had data on that directly before. So look forward to that and I will update you with that as I learn more. 
Awesome. Are there any questions? Any questions? Seeing none, thank you so much. parking lot permit prices. Um, this will result in over a 30% reduction from the proposed um, rates next year for orange lots to $99 through the promotion period. Um, again, this still has to go up for a public hearing in March, so during my next report, I hope to finalize that and tell you guys that it was approved. Um, as for this semester, I have taken on a new role as the Student Affairs Coordinator and I'm learning a lot. Um, we had our first guest speaker of the year actually come in last week, um, Ms. Karen Anderson from Community Engagement. Um, she came to speak about the office, what they do, and then how we as students can be more involved with the office. Um, while serving in this role, I plan to bring in at least three more speakers throughout the semester, probably alternating every other week or every two weeks. So if anyone has any suggestions for good speakers, I'd also like to hear that too. Um, as for my new project this semester, uh, I have decided to look at off-campus housing and concerns students have with that. Um, Senator Bonner and I will actually be tackling this together, and we will be using the data, the data from uh, Senator Soliman's and Senator Sneha's report, hopefully. Um, they conducted this last semester, so I hope to use some of that data to help me um, progress forward with this, uh, this initiative. Um, this was actually one of the three issues I ran on and wanted to work on last semester, so I'm excited that I get to do that now. Um, specifically, we'd like to re-examine maintenance and security policies and seeing about if we can get some questions answered about that. And then also, I'd like to see the number of uh, individual leases expanded. So I know for some students, one big reason they stick with a certain complex is because of individual leases. So we kind of like to go around more complexes and see if they will start offering more individual leases once they hear students are actually concerned about this and want that as well. Um, we met with John Bullcock last Friday and he gave us some great advice about how to start. And so in the next few weeks, we will be going around to local complexes and talking to housing managers. Uh, we want to express the concerns we have, hear their input and their um, solutions, and then relay that information back to students and educate them on housing and things like that. Um, lastly, towards the beginning of last sem or this semester, I attended a public forum with the City of Mankato discussing housing and social services needs. Um, one of the things I actually found was a little bit surprising is that Blue Earth County has the third highest poverty rate in the state of Minnesota and has for over 10 years. So. This kind of relates to the larger issues in Mankato with housing and the lack of family, senior, and individual individual affordable housing. So I really encourage the council members that I met with that I would like to see kind of a connection between businesses, MNSU, and the council to come up with solutions that benefit us all. I'm sure some of my constituents, which are off-campus students, are included in that poverty rate. So I encourage them to contact me to see how I can help them and how we can all work together to find solutions for that. And now I stand for questions. Are there any questions? Any questions? Seeing none, thank you. <laughs> Senator Keller and Pitchboard. <laughs> So um, last semester I was talking about how in sport management there's not many um, elective classes um, going on. So I finally spoke with uh, one of the professors running the intro classes. And since I have the survey now that we're going to be putting it in these next two weeks have, since they just had their first exam, and then that way I can have results back by spring break and kind of look over them for spring break and then have spring break figure out that. Because when I talked with the dean, she was very adamant about getting at least one offered um, each semester as well as when I talked with the director of sport management she was as well concerned with uh, I guess the popularity of each class and then as well as I just just started uh, looking at like internship hours and um, there's not really a way that you can search for your internship hours without going to a professor 
um, and figuring and them logging in to be able to see your internship hours. So I'm looking into possibly getting like a website or something that you can log into so that you don't have to uh, obviously go to your professor every time you want to see how many internship hours you are currently at. Yeah. Are there any questions? Any questions? Seeing none. Thank you. Love the hustle. <laughs> Hi everyone. Um, I am Gretchen Bigged and I was one of the senators for the College of Allied Health and Nursing. Um, and I had a recent meeting with our dean, uh, Dean Chris, and um, a lot of exciting things happening in our college that I'm really excited to share with y'all. Um, so we just talked a little bit about the provost um, leaving and what that new search looks like um, in making sure that our provost has um, an academic college background um, because to properly serve students you need to know um, what students are up to and how that works so we just talked about um, how important that is and how um, both of us can be involved in the search so that was really interesting and then talking about uh, the changes that were possibly going to be made to our college um, a lot of those changes were being made to specifically the College of Allied Health and Nursing, so um, kind of happy that is uh, being redirected somewhere else. Um, and then, if you'll remember my last center report, I talked about how the ASL classes, or I guess they're just labeled sign language classes, are all 200 level, which isn't really representative of the work that we do in those classes. So I'm happy to report in the fall they will be rolling out, hopefully, with um, the first one at 200 level, and then intermediate and advanced one will be 300 level, and then our advanced two, which I'm in right now, will be 400 level, um, which led me to ask my dean uh, what that'll look like on my transcript since I completed them at 200 level. Um, they're not really sure yet and are hopefully looking at how they can change that by the time that I graduate, which would be really nice and reflective of the work that um, we all have done in those classes. Um, so, a new, a new program that I had brought up uh, in the last report as well is diversity cohorts. So that's through our speech and rehabilitation program. Um, uh, so there are 5% of the SLPs are people of color, uh, which is a problem because that's not super representative to the students that we're helping or the people that need help from uh, speech pathologists. So we are going to be rolling out a program hopefully in the fall again uh, that is admitting eight uh, cohorts that are people of color, and they will do their clinicals in the Minneapolis public school systems. Um, we talked about it a little bit, and it's just super cool that uh, you know this is happening and that we get to provide opportunities for people. Uh, but we talked about barriers as well, so transportation was a big one. And so um, the college actually came up with the idea to do MAV immersion, which is like um, being present in class but uh, in an online setting. So like, they can still be in class, but they can take those classes in Edina, so they don't have the transportation to get to make it up. They don't want that to be a hindrance um, for them completing that coursework and being a part of the program. So that's something super exciting. And then the next exciting news is our Health and Biomedical Science Summit, uh, which is put on by our college each year. Ours will actually be happening in October, October 7th. Uh, and so we won't be doing it in the spring, so just a little change there. But we have a really great keynote speaker. So uh, if you've heard of the Central Park Five, the uh, uh, there was a woman who was brutally, uh, brutally beaten and raped, and there were five young men convicted for the crime. So we have one of those young men, Dr. not young men anymore, but Dr. Youssef Salam, who speaks on social justice issues. Um, so that's really cool and something really exciting for our college because we will have, yeah, the summit is about social determinants of health. So there will be our keynote, Dr. Salam, and then um, it'll include lightning rounds for each determinant so people can learn more about that. And then there will be breakout sessions throughout the afternoon. The good news is, is that since you're all students, you all get in free. So I would really recommend that you register for that conference in the fall because I think it'll be great. Um, not only to hear from that keynote, which is super cool, but just to learn more about how our world is affected by health. And then another exciting thing is that TEDx Talks 
I'm sure you've heard of them or saw the emails about applying. Um, but five out of the eight speakers are from the College of Allied Health and Nursing, so super big point of pride for us and just proud of the work that people are doing. Um, and then a big change that might be happening that our dean talked about is that social work might be moving to the College of Allied Health and Nursing. So they might be moving out of SBS. Um, and we talked about how SBS can be um, not super descriptive about the programs that they have. Like psychology, yes, fits in social and behavioral sciences, but um, it works well with our allied, or not allied health, <laughs> drug and alcohol studies major, which is in the College of Allied Health. So it'll be interesting to see how that change goes. Um, and it's just starting uh, getting, getting started and talking to faculty about it. But that could be something really exciting that's coming our way. And uh, I stand for questions. Are there any questions? Any questions? Seeing none, thank you very much. <laughs> we have Senator Pearson. Hi, uh, uh, Senator Pearson, Behavior <laughs> Sciences. I don't have a lot to report. I'm new. Um, <laughs> Still working on a project. Um, I can kind of talk about um, what went down this weekend. We talked to a whole lot of senators and house reps um, of the uh, Capitol. Happy to report that it went, for the most part, well. There were a couple of speed bumps that we encountered. Uh, but everything went well and talks went well. Uh, support was pretty positive. Um, we are doing tabling for um, academic affairs after spring break. We're still working out the details on that. Um, the committees that have joined are on academic affairs and um, legislative process. I forget what that one's called. Uh, that's about it. Not uh, much else to report. I use for questions. Are there any questions? Seeing none, thank you. Seeing that there's no old business, we'll move into new business. There is a motion of, uh, sorry, are there any motions for new business? Senator Weinzer. Hi everyone, um, you'll see in front of you uh, more than likely a resolution. Um, I'm just going to be addressing that really quickly as a part of new business today. So a lot of you might recall the um, presentation that I gave um, last week about the Civic Engagement Mobilization Committee. Since then we've, had, um, we've been in contact with university officials and have determined that it will be the best course of action from here on out to make the Civic Engagement Mobilization Committee because of all of the civic um, engagement um, an action coming up in, over the course of the 2020 year yet to come um, to make it an official ad hoc committee um, through student government. So you can see at the top it says a resolution to formalize the Civic Engagement Mobilization Committee as a student government ad hoc committee through, the, through December of 2020. I'll briefly just go through it so you can stick with me here. Whereas civic engagement and education is a priority among all college students, Whereas student government should work with university partners to promote, engage, and mobilize the student body to both register to vote and to be an educated voter for the 2020 general election. Whereas the 2020 census will create an impact for representation and federal funding in Mankato. Be it resolved, the Civic Engagement Mobilization Committee shall become an ad hoc committee, which is part of student government. Be it further resolved, the ad hoc committee will sunset at the end of fall 2020, meaning that will essentially dissolve in the fall of 2020 after the um, presiden presidential election. Be it further resolved, the ad hoc committee shall make further shall make regular reports to the student senate on efforts regarding civic engagement and education through programming and promotional efforts. And finally, be it further resolved. There will be a limit of 10 students appointed to the ad hoc committee by the president of student government, Anissa, and confirmed by the Senate. Awesome. So the second for this is Vice President Trenny. Um, is are there any questions about the motion for Senator Weinzero? So any questions, um, Senator Spursell? I just have one of a general question. What's the difference between an ad hoc committee and just a regular committee? Yeah. So. Um, yeah, um, an ad hoc committee is more of just like, it's a committee for a short amount of time, either that or it's a committee that is like just starting out and then would like to become a full committee. So this committee would not need to go in our bylaws, whereas if we were to be com uh, creating a committee on civic engagement and mobilization, we would have to do a bylaw amendment, and then that committee would stay throughout until it's removed, until student government dissolves or is removed from the bylaws um, along those lines, if that makes sense. Right, yeah. Are there any other questions? Senator Calderon Pushpard? Is there a reason to uh, limit it to only 10 people? 
Um, not necessarily. I guess if there were an abundance of people and if it were over 10, we could probably reevaluate. However, if, you know, I feel like my assumption is that if there's a lot of people in a committee like this, um, then it'll be hard to delegate work to individual people that have specific tasks assigned in the group, and it would just get overwhelming for the, the chair and other people involved. But it could always be a possibility to add more questions. Are there any other questions about the motion? Any other questions about the motion? Seeing none, we'll move into discussion on the motion. Just a reminder that we have a two-week voting period, per usual. Um, so we'll be discussing this week, and then next week we'll be voting on it. Um, sorry. Uh, so then next week we'll be voting on it, barring any uh, motions to expedite voting. So are there any discussion points on this motion? Any discussion? Support this. Our precinct is next week, right? Yeah. Yeah, but this is um, just speaking for Senator Weinzerl. This uh, motion is um, for civic engagement mobilization, not just for caucuses, primaries, um, the uh, census, and presidential election, which will be taking place until fall of 2020. Are there any other? Um, is there any discussion at all? Any discussion? Motion activated. Please. Is there a second? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we are honest for you. <laughs> okay. Um, so expediting voting would mean that we would be voting this week instead of next week. Is there any dissent to expediting voting? Any dissent? Any dissent? Seeing no dissent, I assume unanimous consent to expedite voting to this week. Uh, we will now move back into discussion on this motion. Is there any discussion on this motion? Any discussion, Senator Badka? Um, is there a second? Is there any dissent to ending discussion and moving into voting? Any dissent? Seeing none, we'll now be moving into a vote on this motion. So if you are in favor of this motion, please raise your placard. <laughs> Um, is there any um, opposed? Any opposed? Any opposed? Any abstentions? Any abstentions? Seeing none, this motion passes 29 to 0 to 0. Cool. So, um, are there any other motions for new business? Any other motions? Any other motions? Seeing no motions, we did not get any um, can, uh, any applications for our off senator position, off <laughs> off campus senator position. So that election has been moved to next week, the 26th. With that being said, there is also another vacancy we have. We have a CSET um, vacancy, and that um, election will be on March 4th. Um, which is the week before spring break. Make sure we are encouraging people to apply for these. Off campus is arguably the easiest, besides at large, to find anyone to apply for it. So make sure you guys are talking to your friends that live off campus. And while tabling, make sure you're talking about it. Uh, as, long, as well as CSET, um, we want to have these seats filled before the budget meeting. So, John, dude. You, you just look concerned. Okay. <laughs> um, so um, we really want to have these seats filled before the budget meeting, and we'll make sure to pass on any information they need for the budget meeting to them. But make sure we are having people apply for these. Um, with that being said, are there any announcements? President Omar. Um, so will the following senators see me um, at that back corner? Um, Senator Nellis, Senator Stiff, Senator McDavid, Senator Cherry, Schmidt, Brandmeier, Pearson, Shaw, sorry, um, Senator Dickey, Calderon Pitchford, Triwatha, Suleiman, um, Senator Karki, Senator Watts, Senator Vondra, Senator, Senator Wolfort, Senator Shoemaker, and Senator Weinsroll. Please see me at that back corner after this meeting has adjourned. You guys aren't in trouble? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Senator Cherry. 
Um, I made the same announcement last week, but I'm submitting um, my feedback on a graduate student survey tonight. So if you have anything you want added or any information about like Campus Kitchen or something, please let me know. Thank you. Um, Senator Nellis? Yeah. Um, on behalf of the committee that we're on, the Student VFW Advisory Committee, um, we have some handouts. We just, it just to make sure, that, yeah, make it go quicker next week. So, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> do you guys want to say anything about the handouts, or are you just gonna? Um, it just kind of has, it just kind of has some information about athletics as a whole and like the success of programs and what we do outside of um, our sport, and then it also has some information about. Uh, like our year budget. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, John? Just a reminder, the largest student-run philanthropy on campus is taking place on Saturday. Mammothon will be from noon to 10 p.m. Um, part of that is Cosmic Pico 2.0 that's open to any students, so uh, please uh, feel free to come out and support the cause. Um, and then also today, an all-student email out went out to students on campus that was specifically focused on the election. So we know that election information is now out to every student, and, uh, thanks to uh, election chair Brings and to Senator Weinsdorf for working on the promotional materials to get the word out. Um, um, we want to make sure that people are informed about the opportunity. So, uh, if you have anybody who has questions, the first rules reading is taking place mañana, tomorrow. So, or is it? Yes, tomorrow. That's right. Yes. So, um, that should be uh, uh, the first opportunity for folks to take one of the big steps towards their candidacy. So, thank you. Um, are there any other announcements? Um, Dominic? Uh, so on behalf of students tonight, we're going to have an event um, right before Senate from 2 to 4 p.m. next week um, in CSU 101, the Heritage Room. It's about the census, and we're uh, collaborating with the Modern Cultural Affairs Center and the International Center, providing language guides, so sense information in the uh, languages of, like, I think there's 42 languages, and people can sign up. We even have a um, student from American Indian Affairs translating <laughs> the same information into the Dakota language, so we will have that available as well. There's going to be refreshments. Um, the Asian American Affairs direct, intern director is going to um, yeah, have some talks. So just show by, um, step by, talk to people. We're going to have like more like a political facilitating talk and then also um, encourage people to attend. Thank you. Vice President Belkus? Hi. I wanted to let you all know that an email will be going out tomorrow morning to all students to remind you about courses that start at the midterm. So there's a collection of courses starting on March 5th. There's about three that start for some reason after spring break. Um, and then there's two workshop opportunities, which are pretty interesting. You can uh, do the Pan-African Conference, uh, register for one credit, and you attend a few sessions and write a paper, I think. You work with Kenneth Reed on that one. And then the other one is, I think, uh, it's out of psychology. But it's another workshop of this sort, where, so it's more of an experiential type of thing for one credit. So please keep your eyes out for that, and please make sure that your friends know about it, too. Thank you. Are there any final announcements? Any final announcements? Seeing none, we'll be moving into roll call. Senator Biggs. Present. Senator Colorado Pitchford. Yep, Senator McDavid. <laughs> um, Senator Schmidt. Here. Senator Johnson. Here. Senator Dickey. Bye bye. Senator Watts. Seven. Senator Wasoliman. Present. <laughs> Senator Brandmeyer. Senator Cherry. Here. Senator Moore. Here. Um, Senator Prodden. Um, Senator Schumacher. Senator Pearson. Here. Senator Maltari. Senator yeah. Chiwatha. Present. Senator Stiff. Here. Senator Weinzer. Here. Senator Bottom. Senator Bashal. Here. Senator Cut. Senator Nellis. Here. Senator Karki. Here. Senator Swanka. Here. Senator Vandra. Senator Botka. Senator Sversal. Here. Senator Walford. President. Um, Senator Omar, I mean President Omar. President. Vice Ooh. President Trenny. Okay, and on that note, we are adjourned at 508. <laughs> back to a Party in the back corner. Yes. Well, I got my notification from here, but it really wants to party.